not always nice to hear the truth, but I think in some ways we heard now the truth. COVID is really a warning. It is a tremendous message to say, stop, take stock and come to your senses. The kind of actions that we are doing on the planet are causing so much damage and so tremendous disruptions that we need to alter them very fast. As the world tries to recover from COVID-19, Finland is on a carbon-cutting crusade and it's refusing to let a pandemic stand in its way. The climate change hasn't been cancelled. The COVID-19 has learned us that, yes, we can act together. And now it's really time to act together to make sure that we solve the climate crisis. And we can do it if we want to. The nation's chasing one of the most ambitious emission reduction targets in the world, doing what Australia won't and pledging to go carbon neutral by 2035. But to get there, it needs to confront a dirty secret and take on a fossil fuel that's worse than coal. Se raja tulee täällä oikealla, mutta mun mielestä tää on Tapion maita. Finland is known as the land of a thousand lakes. But that's actually an understatement. It's covered by over 180,000 lakes, rivers and wetlands. And here in Selkie, water is at the heart of life. A lake is very, very deep topic for Finnish people and uh, really at the centre of our old culture. Here in Karelia and eastern areas of Finnish-speaking peoples, fishing is the oldest way of life we know. I strongly believe that each lake has its own being and a kind of a way of existence. And you have to spend considerable time, many, many years, to learn to coexist and have good relations with those lakes or rivers. In spring, the catch comes from fish traps called fike nets, a tradition thousands of years old, but it holds clues to understanding the impacts of climate change. To have people out fishing and hunting and, and in the forests daily acts like human sensors, or they are our nodes of observing how does the change look like. For most of the marsh mires and lakes and rivers, there is no scientific data that goes beyond 1960s. So it's actually the only way to know how things used to be in the past. Over the past few decades, village leader Tero Mustanen has been recording the knowledge of Selkie's elders, like Enri. Enery has been fishing this lake since the 1950s, and his memories reveal significant changes to the natural habitat here. No niin, eiköhän laita kämpille kahville. Niin. Suun kesät on kaikki kauniita ja mansikat on makkeita ja auto on täynnä mansikoita. Talavet oli kyllä niin kuin silloin lumisi ja silloin kun ne ei ollut mitään aurauksia, se oli hevos. Tiet reki, tiet kulki ja ne kierteli joka talon pihan kautta ja, ja, ja sitten keväällä piti tehdä tavalla hevoselle lapio ja uusi reitti, kun sen mä se polanna niin, niin korkeasti siinä ei pysynä mikään. Et, talavetti on lyhentynä. The present is of course the sum of all that happened, but if we don't know what happened in the past, especially regarding environmental change. We are in unknown waters. And that's why it is very crucial to speak with Einari. No niin kuin nyt parina viime talvena tai kolmena on, niin jääolosuhteet on hirveän paljon huonommat. Että nyt tavallaan ei pidä se ennen kuin tammikuulla verkon lasku. Me ollaan jo tuolla väinän putkeja pusketaan. Ei sitä tiedä, miten sitä sitkeästi. In a way, it's a train headed at full speed to a wall. Things are, of course, moving into a very dangerous stage. We just learned 
that there has been the highest recorded temperature in the Arctic in northeastern Siberia. In the same region, we found out that there are oil spills because of collapsing infrastructure resulting from the melting permafrost. And all of these actions combined with the forest fires, tundra fires, what's going on in Brazil and Australia are what's often known as tipping points. The only way to summarize it is that it's a clear and present danger of urgent proportions. So there is no more time at all. What do we want? In parliamentary elections in 2019, the climate crisis emerged as the number one concern for Finnish voters. While the left-leaning Social Democrats received the most votes, it wasn't enough votes to rule outright. So a coalition government was formed. It now happens to be all female, led by Prime Minister Sanna Marin. The new generation are expecting us to act and we have to fulfill uh, the expectations of the people. We have to do more, we have to do it faster. It's about the future of our children. It's now the job of these women to do what Australia refuses to, slow down the speeding train of climate change and make Finland carbon neutral in just 15 years. Well, if you think about uh, the Finland's emission in the whole, you, you can say that in globally it's not so big. But if you count it per, uh, per citizens, it's among the biggest ones. And, and we see that every country needs to uh, do its part. To hit its ambitious carbon neutral target, Finland plans to cut back on logging investments, radically reduce its consumption of fossil fuels and kick-start a renewables boom. We know that those countries who are, who are among the first ones, they can, they can do the business for the new solutions. And at the moment, the whole world is crying to the good solution for the redu reduction to emissions, get rid of the fossils. And if you can have those solutions, that's the huge opportunity for the business. About five hours north of Helsinki lies the municipality of E, a poster child for how the government plans to reach its carbon neutral goal. No niin, Vanamo, tänään meillä oli ohjelmassa metsäretki. Lähetään teidän tuttuun metsään Tiinan johdolla. E is reducing its carbon emissions faster than any other community in Finland, thanks to a number of climate actions that start young. Uh, me halutaan opettaa lapsille se, että luontoa on hyvä kunnioittaa, luontoa pitää kunnioittaa ja että se on luonnollinen toimintaympäristö, aina ei tarvitse olla. Sille, että me lähdetään hyvin pienistä asioista. Puhutaan lasten kanssa kierrättämisestä ja siitä, että miksi on tärkeää, että, että ei hankita liikaa ja tämmöisiä pieniä juttuja. Ihan semmoista käytännön, käytännön juttua tuolla arjessa. Tutkipas, löydätkö sieltä violetin kukan? Jaa. Muistaako joku, mikä oli violetin kukan nimi? On, on ehkä sitä suurta kokonaisuutta haastava, mutta meidän mielestä on tärkeää tavallaan kasvattaa ne lapset siihen ajattelumaailmaan, että heitä on helpompi nyt kasvatetaan ne lapset siihen ajattelumaailmaan, niin se on sitten ihan luonnollista heillä, kun ikävuosia tulee. A big part of the 2035 target is a massive shift to renewable energy. Here in E, they've significantly reduced their use of fossil fuels and rely on energy from wind, solar and geothermal sources. Now we are at the heart of the administrational centre in E-Town. On that side, we can see the church and our library. And in the roof of the library is uh, solar panels. Last year, we produced 3% of our energy by using uh, solar panels. Ari Alotasava is E's mayor. He says the town's on track to reduce its carbon emissions by 80% this year, 15 years ahead of the nation. To reach that kind of target, 80%, everyone should be involved. And everyone is public organisations, 
companies, other businesses, and also people who are living here. We need all those and their actions. E is now home to one of the biggest wind farms in the country. Some argue these enormous wind turbines are a blight on the landscape, but as well as bringing power, they bring profits, taxes and jobs, which is won over locals. We now can say that we are driving by using a local wind because the electricity used in this car is produced here in a local wind farm. There are several wind parks in our region. These turbines is producing more energy than is used here in E. So the companies are exporting the energy to the other regions and the other uh, buyers in Finland. So in this park with 40 turbines, the tax revenue is about 1 million annually to the municipality. So it's a big money to us and to all citizens in, in E because with that one million, we produce the services to the people who live here. And then in E, these 50 turbines means about 50 new jobs. So it also brings workers here. These are very positive things to E and uh, people here. And that's one uh, uh, main reason or one, one, one very important reason why people, are, people here are, they have accepted these wind farms. Across Finland, there are pockets of climate warriors like the residents of E, using everyday actions to help propel the nation towards its 2035 goal. But in the fishing town of Selki, village leader Tero Mustanen has an even bigger idea. No niin, huomenta kaikille, niin nyt ollaan tällä kauden lopussa viimeisiä työpäiviä, niin tänään lähdetään sitten sitä kalkitusta, eli tuolla... In April, as COVID-19 swept across the world, Tero was in a race against the melting ice. So today we are in a bit of a rush, because we are at the tail end of the winter or the ice season, and the ground has to be frozen, especially at night time, to withstand the diggers and our equipment. Look at the ice, it's almost, even during this time, it has vaporized. Not just a fisherman, Dr. Tero Mustanen is also a leading climate scientist, writing for the International Panel for Climate Change. Today, along with his team, Tero is trying to turn a carbon polluter into a carbon capture in a process called rewilding. We are building new wetlands that will slowly emerge as carbon sinks, meaning they are trapping carbon from the atmosphere. So a lot of the early design for the site has to do with how the water will behave and what do we want to do with water on this site. At the beginning of the work, we have to do some of the human actions, you can say all, almost interventions, like creation of a wetland. But then very quickly after that, when we are done, we let the sites to be. And nature has the power, speed and possibility to come back. Keep up the good work, guys. A little bit faster, Lauri. Formed over thousands of years, these peatlands have been destroyed by mining. Every second the land stays like this, it's leaking carbon into the atmosphere. Ultimately, if you don't restore these sites, they remain as carbon emission sources. So for example, this Linnunsuo, if we didn't do this work, could be in theory releasing over 900,000 kilos of carbon every year. There are millions of hectares of damaged wetlands and, and marsh mires in Finland. And that's why this work is highly needed. We should be moving very fast through the country and also in other parts where this kind of work can happen. But unfortunately, this is a slow process for national conversation. Despite the incredible promise of Tero's idea, rewilding carbon sinks isn't yet part of the government's 2035 plan. Here is a map of all of our sites. Um, has not been supported by the government at all. 
And uh, when I have spoken with the ministers about that, their view has been that currently the government has no possibility to finance such work. We can go for the day. So it's the wonderful goal of getting to carbon neutrality that I fully support, but it's the means and the actions that the government has decided to take, which I'm very concerned about. Tero's idea could help unlock Finland's carbon neutral goal, but it means confronting a dirty secret and a nationwide reliance on what's being called the forgotten fossil fuel. Jokkus annosta pahaksi hajuksi. Itellähän se on niin kuin yksi mielettävämpiä. On se semmoinen hyvin se 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 on vähän vähän niin kuin huume se koko turve itelle, että North of Selkie remains peat industry heartland, and Heikki Juntunen has been in the business all his life. Olen saanut elää lapsuuttakin, mutta tuota, enemmän halusin olla turveukkoinen tai leik- leikkiä ja uimaa en ole vieläkään kerran opetella. Että... Ja neuvolassakin on ihmetelty, että jos piirtää semmoista mustaa, tämmöistä näin sutturaa, niin mitähän se sitten voisi tarkoittaa, niin turveaumaa. Alussa oli suo, Kuokka ja Jussi. Näinhän se alkaa. Väinö Linnan täällä pohjan tähden alla. Peat is Finland's version of coal. Since the 1940s, it's provided heat and energy, dug up by farmers like Heikki to help fuel the nation's power plants and its wealth. Norjalaisilla on öljynsä. Onko heillä oikeus vaurastua sillä? Tai puolalaiset? Miksi he tekevät kauppaa kivihiilellä? Mutta kuinka me suomalaiset? Voimmeko me hyödyntää metsiemme vihreää ja soittemme ruskeaa kultaa? Kyllä, kyllä ja kyllä. So while lakes and rivers lie at the core of Finnish identity, so does peat. Eli näitä traktoreita meillä on ajaa hyvin monenlaisia ihmisiä. On nuoria ja vanhempia ja opiskelijoita työssä. Kyllä moni on jäljestä käsin kuitenkin kiitellyt, että kiitos, että sain nuorena olla. Ja kyllä täältä on ponnistanut moni insinööri ja jopa poliitikkokin. Tuota. Thanks to workers like him. Heikki says around a million Finnish homes are still heated in part by burning peat. But to become carbon neutral, all this will have to end. Extracting peat generates more than 23 million tonnes of carbon dioxide every year, more than twice the emissions of Finnish road, rail, boat and air traffic. Kyllä siitä niin kuin, tällä hetkellä niin kuin se päällimmäisenä on semmoinen niin kuin vähän ahistuneisuus ja, ja niin kuin tietynlainen vihaakin sitten päättäjiä kohtaa ja politiikkaa kohtaa, että totta kai me olisi haluttu, että tämä on se homma, mitä me osataan ja tämä on se homma, mitä turveyrittäjät osaa. Että me, meistä on monne, siitä ei ole kyse, mutta että olisi, olisi ollut ihan mukava tehdä sitä, mitä osaa ja mistä tykkää ja mikä on niin kuin kannattavaa ja järkevää. Että Nyt, nyt se tulee vaan sitten tota... Turpeellehan ei ole asetettu edelleenkään viimeistä käyttöpäivää. Ja toivottavasti semmoista ei aseteta koskaan. The government says that burning peat for energy must be halved by 2030. But scientists and activists say it needs to be ended entirely, a move the government's already begun for coal. One of the quickest and easiest ways to reach your goal is by ending the peat industry. Why haven't you been able to do that yet, considering that you've done it already for coal? Uh, that's a good question. It's very important that now when we are uh, cutting down the using of the peat, we need to do it very um, wisely and make sure that those people for whom the peat is important for their living, we need to make sure 
that after getting rid of the peat, they are not left alone. But I, I have said that uh, I think the peat has been kind of a blind spot for Finland for years. The Finnish government still supports the peat industry each year with tax subsidies. It also continues to issue new peat mining licences. Not all parties in the five-party coalition can agree on a way forward on peat. For now, peat sits like a thorn in the side of the nation's carbon-cutting campaign. And what's more, mining it causes enormous collateral damage. Let's start from the fact that the site itself, a marshmire, fen or bog, will have to be destroyed in order to start the industrial production on peat mining. Secondly, there is a large amount of pollution that happens as a result of peat mining. So it's a real killer on many fronts. It's affecting thousands of lake systems and river systems and uh, on all these different uh, ways. One day in 2010, Tero and other local fishermen spotted hundreds of fish floating belly up on the surface of Selkies rivers. A result of acidic discharge, at first there was no explanation as to why. Tässä on nyt sitten tämä joka joki silloin aamulla, kun se kalakuolema oli tapahtunut, eli siinä on hirmu paljon tuollaista humusainesta. Ja tästä saatiin tämmöinen lähikuva, jossa näkyy toisaalta se, että se oli hirvittävän hapanta, eli tämä on tämmöinen todella oudon kirkasta se vesi. Tero approached the state-owned peat company Vapo, who told him it was caused by falling leaves. But Tero suspected the acidic waters were a result of runoff from the peat field. With livelihoods reliant on fishing, Tero and his village took the company to court and won. Ja tota, tässä niin otsikosta saa, saa ää, tiedon, niin tässä nyt on se tilanne, että turvetuotanto keskeytetään linnunsuolla, eli tämä oli tuossa mitä puhuinkin, niin se ensimmäinen historiallinen hetki, jolloin Suomessa ja tota, sitten täällä lukee, että se vapo antoi tiedoksi sen, että I think we are witnessing a transformation in Finland. The climate impact is so immense that the public is slowly demanding and waking up to the fact that this kind of activity can't go on anymore. This leaves the company with, and the whole business of peat mining with very profound questions. What to do? The International Union for the Conservation of Nature calls peatlands the largest natural carbon store on Earth. It's now the height of summer in Selkie, and Tero and his team are heading back to the site they started rewilding at the tail end of winter. They want to see if their work is paying off. Tero kalastaa, Tero kirjoittaa IPCC-raportin, Tero mittaa kaasut, Tero ennallistaa, Tero analysoi kaasut, kaikki. Ennen kaikkea oman metaanipäästöni. So today we are visiting a former peat mining area that has been restored and rewilded. And one of the key questions on sites like this is the question of what are they in terms of greenhouse gases? How much are they releasing or trapping? And what happens before restoration and afterwards? And today we are using a very high-end scientific equipment, something called trace gas analyzer. It's one of the first in the global area that can conduct precise methane and greenhouse gas carbon dioxide measurements as a mobile unit. Gently, Antoine, gently. What? Like on the first date. This unit is worth $60,000. Terra is hoping it can provide crucial data to bring the nation and the world on board with his rewilding scheme. How does it look like, Antoine? It's OK. A lot of methane because it's wet out here. Yeah. It's yeah, it's reflective steady. of the uh, vegetation. And what's going on with the CO2? Can we see? That? Yeah, OK. So that's pretty steady. So we are identifying that there are some pockets of methane and releases that are then immediately showing on the screen and, and uh, instant data or real time. Was there a drop in the methane just a minute ago? Well, it was just a little bit unsteady, but it was okay because CO2 
was acting as it was supposed to be acting. What do the numbers tell? The soil-based emissions are ending when they are re-wetted and the wetland is expanding. And that's already a major action for climate because it's ending an active emission source. But on these very early years, we will have to stomach and accept the fact that some methane will be released as a result of rewilding. But that will dissipate and uh, it will then meet with the way carbon dioxide is being trapped. And once we get to that point, it then over the next century transforms into a major natural sink. On the road to 2035, the effectiveness of Tero's work isn't in doubt. The much bigger question remains whether Finland's government can phase out peat before it's too late. It's now under significant pressure to end its peat subsidies. In July, Prime Minister Sanna Marin addressed the United Nations, urging political resolve. Our generation of global leaders will be judged by the decisions we make over the course of this year. Our children's destiny must not be shaped by accelerating climate change, more global inequality and human suffering on an unforeseen scale. We must be determined to make choices we can defend based on the best available science. Without political decisions, change will not happen. Until that happens, what counts for Finland's climate warriors are the early signs their efforts are paying off. We can see it every day, how immensely beautiful the comeback is. So we should not always think we are destroying nature completely. If it has the time and the possibility to make a comeback, often it will. It may not be the same prime nature that used to exist after Ice Age, but it's still the same nature, the same Mother Earth that's coming back. And therein lies probably the greatest source of all solutions and wisdom, which we just have forgotten as a global society. Human mind and nature are actually very deeply connected. And when we are restoring these kind of sites after a century of damages, when nature comes back, we are also healing our mind. We are reconnecting our minds with the true world. And there's nothing more beautiful than the sound of the geese or the swans or the waders or the fish splashing on the river. And this is the only ultimate hope that I see also for the planet. This hope could be a new start. It's not the end, but it could be a new start that we urgently need.